zapraszamy do wysłuchania i obejrzenia kolejnej rozmowy podczas konferencji Europejskiej Federacji Humanistycznej. Tym razem rozmawiamy z członkami delegacji rosyjskiej, Rosyjskiego Towarzystwa Humanistycznego. Welcome to Athens. Thank you. Could you please say a few words about yourself? Could you introduce yourself? I am Sergei Badaev. I am from Moscow. Uh, I am an English teacher and uh, I'm uh, head of uh, Moscow branch of uh, Russian Humanist Society. Hello, I'm uh, Lia Ashanova. I'm a member of the Russian Human Society uh, from um, last year. And uh, I'm glad uh, that I know this now with you and with all humanists. Maybe we can start from a general question. What is humanism? What the word or the term humanism means in Russia to you in general? Um, as far as I understand, people often use the word humanist in three different meanings. The first is just a sort of a quality of a character. When people are kind, polite, we call them they are humanist. The second meaning is about our worldview or personal philosophy as a concept or as a humanist often call it life stance, our position in life. And the third meaning is a humanist as a social movement as a organizations which try to promote the I ideal of humanism. So this was very general answer. But, uh, I, I've been to Russia several times and I talked to many members, especially young members of Russian Humanist Association and I uh, had an opportunity to find out that in not uh, aspects of the sense of humanism according to them was similar to what is understood as humanism in the West. For example, one of the problems was to us, and just a little bit from the West, that uh, many members, young members of Humanist Association in Russia were homophobic. Do you think it's a problem or I think if you ask Western people here whether uh, gay friendly way of thinking or attitude is a part of humanism, they would say yes, of course. Yes, uh, well, yeah, well, I, I think it's a real problem for Russia because according to hi the history of Russia and according to uh, official propaganda, some people in Russia believe that they are humanists, but they use it in uh, quite a different sense uh, than European humanists. Some, even Russian people, believe that they are humanists from, uh, like, Marxist-Leninist humanists. We have the same yeah. So that's, I think it's a big problem. Such sort of uh, different understanding the same word. So, um, does that situation uh, cause any conflicts, maybe, in your organization? I heard about some kind of split. In Humanist Association in Russia? Yes, just now the, the Russian Humanist Society uh, is going through a sort of reorganization and uh, reformulation their uh, principles. And that this difference we, we are talking about is now very clear. And people understand that they cannot have, uh, cannot get understanding and uh, or mutual basis for work. And uh, I guess uh, quite possibly we have uh, uh, separate maybe organizations even, which w w will use the same word, humanism. Well, to me, humanism is also a feminism. A feminism. I've been involved in feminism for 40 years really. So to prove it, I will not only declare that I am a feminist, but I will try to involve women into this conversation. So, Please first give me the mic to a woman from our crew. Uh, can you please tell me uh, what is the Russian Human Society um, main goal? What, what, what are your main activities in Russia? What, what do you do to change the situation in your country? Uh, 
Well, for, for today, uh, it is mostly internal problems. We try to, to build up community and to uh, clear up our goals and ideals and principles because some people understand it differently. But uh, from my personal point of view, I see the main, uh, the two main area of work for humanists. The first is, we can call it social activism, it's a campaigns on human rights and feminism and so on. But another part which is very important is uh, um, elaboration and reflection on our own philosophy, personal philosophy. What is humanism is for us as beings. And that's quite a different part of work. And uh, I believe that these two parts should be interconnected. Uh, our better understanding of philosophy of humanism gets more efficient our actions. And our actions come uh, bring us new facts and ideas to discuss, to reflect, and to make deeper our personal philosophy. One second. Uh, Veronica, I wanted to ask you, because you've been living in the UK now, uh, so has your perception of Russia changed or uh, are you st I understand that you continue working for Russian Humanist Society, so what, what do you do from UK for, for the society? Can you s say a few words about that? Yeah, as I already said, it's, uh, the, the Russian Human Society is going at the moment through a quite hard uh, situation and uh, it's very difficult to... I don't know... <laughs> He said, <laughs> he said yeah, yes, but I think you, you, you do a lot uh, to make us feel a part of international community and uh, maybe to to have better contacts with people with humanists abroad. I try to do it. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, of course. <laughs> maybe I can liberate you because I would like to ask a question which came to my mind when you spoke about mixing philosophy with social activism, generally speaking. And quite a few weeks ago we had a conversation about more or less the same subject under the title, the title, the beginning was the question or rhetorical question, can anyone be a philosopher? Uh, we disagreed to some point, not philosopher in a professional, academic, technical sense, but in the sense you probably had in mind. So what would be your, your answer to this question? Can you repeat the question? Can anyone, just anyone, be a philosopher? Well, uh, of, of course, I believe that uh, it's, it's a real task for a modern citizen because the problems we face in a modern society, they are so complex and uh, of course we, ne we need to have some sort of a, uh, philosophical basis or ground to tackle, to, to deal with these uh, problems. Otherwise we are helpless, I believe. And don't you think that if you are not trying to be philosophical, we become ideological? and the political social social culture becomes easily i am making it very superficial to make it as short as possible uh, so society becomes strongly divided divided into ideological camps which fight against each other while when we are philosophers we are more open to some kind of more sophisticated dialogues we do not tend to be divided that strongly because being ideological means that you are militant and very straightforward and very strict and not open to subtle, you know, to asking questions, to, uh, to point, uh, to problematize if you, all issues possible. And if you find problems in anything and the other side also see problems in anything, you tend to discuss subtle aspects of all issues instead of fighting each other. Yes, and, and that's why I believe that um, the, the culture of humanism is principally the culture of a dialogue and discussion. Because 
in Russia, we, uh, I think in maybe in the whole world, we have uh, well-known atheist groups who are very aggressive and they do not, do not want to discuss anything, they want to fight. And I think in that's... Poland, one of them even wants to put believers to psychiatric hospitals by force. Yeah. I think the, sa the same sort of people uh, in, in Russia, there are in Russia. And uh, that's very sad. And I think we are, as humanists should offer a, an alternative and a solution for this situation. So what will be the alternative? The alternative is a culture of a wide social discussion and dialogue between anyone who wants to, to be a part of this dialogue. Of course, there are some groups which they don't want. We should not coerce them. We should not made them to discuss, but we should invite everyone who wants. I fully agree. Although it happened to me at least once that a former priest with whom I was on the radio and I offered a dialogue, he made some dr tricks and actually it, it turned out that it was not a dialogue uh, at all. And after the program, uh, not in front of the camera nor, nor a microphone, he said in Polish it was Przerobiłem Pana. Uh, I framed you. I managed to frame you. So, uh, you know, it was really hopeless. So dialogue is sometimes difficult or not so possible. Like of winning and losing. Yes, yes, yes. But I fully agree with you that we have to try and try perhaps in a more sophisticated way, sophisticated way. I was maybe too naive, believe, believing that when he said, okay, we can have a dialogue, he actually will have. But I do agree that we should try as much as possible. Yeah, and, I, and I believe that that's a real mean to make a society, to keep it integrated, cohesive, because all groups are different. Every group has its own agenda. And if we don't want the society to split, to shatter on the many different groups, we, we need to use a, a frame or a ground for, for common dialogue and discussion. This is a way to be one society for us. Well, this is definitely an, an idea which is very close to us as well. Uh, I understand that you don't want to make any comments on the situation in Russia, on the actual situation and of the humanists and not only of the humanists. But could you comment on humanist situation in European Union? On, uh, For example, do you think that these humanist values that you are speaking about, the dialogue culture, do you find it in anywhere in Europe? Do you think that in any of the countries it is actually taking place the way you would like it to be in Russia as well, or not at all, or partly? Uh, well, it, it's difficult to, uh, to answer, but I believe that uh, in uh, European countries uh, there is much more uh, situation of dialogue. It's a, it's a um, uh, longer tradition, maybe, of it. For Russia, it, it's, it's not typical at all. For Russian people, they, if they believe that their position or principles are true, they are ready to fight, not to discuss the fight. And that's, that's a pity. <laughs> and I hope we will not finish our uh, conversation with this sad, sorrowful point you have just made. So can you see any positive symptoms of change in Russia? Future or near future or far future? Yeah, for me, the, the, the one clear positive symptom is our presence here at this conference. And I believe that it's it just at the beginning. And um, my aspiration is to, um, to help Russian humanists and people of kind will to, uh, to feel uh, a part of a broader international community not just one country which is true and all other countries are false but a part of an international community well, so welcome to europe we've already joined european humanist federation almost 20 years ago uh, we feel partly at home here so 
Well, I, we are quite happy that you are joining yeah, and Europe. It, and it, it is an honor and a great pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.